knowledge all friends subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for the latest update today we're gonna start with your chemistry class 12th classes here so this is your class 24 5 and 24 classes we had done here and in the same cases we had cover up if i'm talking about that is of unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 unit 5 unit 6 and unit 7 and this is your unit 8 which we have completed and unit 8 where we have to complete it, the dnf block element as well and that is also an important one here we had lastly we had completed your oxidation states and the trends in m2 plus and m standard electrode potentials as well where we had done uh, many questions as well that we have uh, to cover up now we will be going ahead starting with the uh, question only but before starting with this it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers to please go through with the subscribe button and please like and share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even though you can also enjoy the video as well so the question we have is your the fourth question of this particular unit but the uh, sessions we have your first question here so the question is why are why is cr2 plus reducing and mn3 plus is oxidizing when both have d4 configuration here so that what we have to talk about it so i just write it on the question first why cr2 plus reducing and mn3 plus oxidizing when both have d4 configuration okay this is what we had uh, that we have a question here so here cr2 plus uh, is reducing as its configuration changes from d4 to d3 the letter uh, having a half filled which is t2 uh, that is level and uh, which we had uh, we have to discuss in you know uh, that is in unit 9 in the coming unit and on the other hand that the change from mn2 plus to mn3 plus that results in the half filled d5 or configuration which has extra stability as well so i will give you one uh, question for that uh, and that is the e uh, m2 plus um, uh, by uh, you know m the value of the copper is positive which is plus 0.34 volt and what is the possible reason for this and hint is that consider its high delta of h and low delta of hydration of h as well and i just give you oh, the you know a sort of hint to solve it out like sum of enthalpy change you can go ahead and you can just solve it out if uh, you know you have your concept being cleared now we'll go ahead to discuss about uh, which is your about the thermochemical data uh, kilojoule moving in was for the first row transition element and the standard electrode potential for the reductions of mn uh, to m here m second to m as well so we'll go ahead for the same and uh, which is to be as follows here so here this is your elements elements then we have your this is element metals that we have then delta of h metals delta i h i and delta one well delta one in more delta one edge one here delta one h two so delta of hydration this h m to plus and e by v that we have so here that we have to follow it out Now uh, for the same, this is for Ti, E, Cr, Mn, Fe, Co, Ni, Cu, 
Zn. Okay, for the scene we have to find out for these so the value for the scene is for ti there is delta a of h here is 469 this is 661 1310 and that is minus 1866 minus 1.66 here 63 here for uh, V, that, that is we have 515, 648, 1370, minus 1895 and minus 1.18. For CR, it is 3, 398, 653, 1590, minus 1925 minus 0 0.90 for mn we have your 279 716 1510 minus 1862 minus 1.18 for fe it is 418 762 1560 minus 1998 and minus 0 0.44 for that we have your f uh, that is co and which is 427 757 1640 minus 0 point 20, 2079 minus 0 0.28 uh, that is we have now for an I we have here is 431, 736, 1750, minus 2121, minus 0 0.25. For the copper here is 339, 745, 1960, minus 2121 and 0 0.34 for zn it is 130 908 1730 minus 2059 minus 0 0.76 here that we have this is for the thermochemical data for the first row transition element and the standard electrode potential for the reduction from m uh, second to m here now on the basis that the stability of the half filled of d or sub shell to mn2 plus and completely filled d uh, 10 configurations in zn2 plus that are related to their e minus values and whereas that E and uh, that Ni is related to uh, the highest negativity here, which is delta hydration, which we have here. Okay, so on the same cases uh, here, we will discuss about the trends in Mn3 plus by Mn2 plus standard electrode potential here. Trends in m3 plus by m2 plus standard electrode potential that we have to talk about it so for the same an examination of e on um, that uh, the mn3 plus and mn2 plus values that shows a varying trends and that the low value for sc that reflects the stability of sc3 plus which has a noble gas configuration and the highest value for zn is due to the removal of an electron from the stable d10 configuration of zn2 plus where the comparatively high values for mn shows that mn2 plus d5 is partially stable whereas comparatively low value of for fe that shows the extra stability of fe3 plus 
d5 and the comparatively low values for the v is related to the stability of v2 plus half filled and level that we have now we'll discuss about trends in stability of higher oxidation state trends in stability of higher oxidation states here so that is uh, that is we have to discuss here for the same uh, let's go ahead for the same as well so on the same cases here for that uh, that is that the stable halides of the 3d series of transition metals with the highest oxidation number are achieved in tix4 which is your tetrahalides vf5 and crf6 the plus 7 state of uh, for mn is not represented in simple halides but mn that is o3f is known and beyond mn no metal has a trihalide except fex3 and cof3 the ability of fluorine to stabilize the highest oxidation state is due to the either higher lattice energy as in the case of cof3 or higher bond enthalpy terms uh, for the higher covalent compound example vf5 and crf6 although v uh, that is a uh, v, v is represented only by bf5 the other halides however undergo hydrolysis to give oxo halides vox3 another feature of fluoride is either instability in the low oxidation state example vx2 where x can be cl uh, bromine and iodine as well and the same applies to cox and on the other hand all cu uh, second halides are known except uh, the iodide in the case cu2 plus oxidizes i minus to i2 here for the same we have your equation 2 cu2 plus plus 4 i minus we will get cu2 i2 solid plus i2 here However, uh, we'll discuss about uh, the table that the formulas of halides of 3D metals we have. So, we'll go ahead. Formula. Formulas of halides of 3D metals that we have to discuss here. So, the oxidation number. talk about it and then we have your Okay, so here we have oxidation number like plus 6, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1 here for the scene. And on the same cases for the key that X will be, you know, fluorine uh, to uh, that is iodine from X plus that we have your fluorine to bromine, and then X second is your fluorine and uh, Cl, where X third would be fluorine to iodine. We'll form it here. That is for the plus six, which will be your CrF six or plus five. It is vf5 and crf3 4 plus 4 we have ti x4 v x dash 4 cr x4 mn f4 then another for plus 3 we have ti x3 v x3 cr 
x3 mn f3 fe x dash 3 and co f3 for plus 2 we have your di x2 which is of third vx2 and cr x2 mn x2 fe x2 co x2 ni x2 cu x2 second zn x2 here for the plus one we have here is your cu x third here that being represented now for the same however many copper one compound are unstable in an aqua solution and undergo the disproportionations dispropor that we have equation for this 2 cu plus will give cu2 plus plus c2 uh, c only that the stability of the cu2 plus aquas rather than cu plus aquas is due uh, the much uh, you know a more negative which is of delta hydration of copper second plus aquas and cu plus as well which more than compensates for the second ionization enthalpy of copper here the ability of the oxygen to stabilize the highest oxidation state is uh, demonstrated in the oxides with the highest oxidation number in the oxides that coincide with the group numbers and is attained in SC203 uh, uh, to MN2, uh, MN207 beyond group 7. No higher oxides of Fe above Fe203 are known and although the ferrets which is ferret 6 which is FeO4 2 minus are formed in alkaline media um, but, uh, but they are readily decomposes to Fe203 and O2. Besides oxides, the oxidation uh, stabilizes, uh, which is your V, and that is VO2 plus or V6 as well, V4 as uh, VO2 plus, and we have TI4 and TiO2 plus as well. So the ability of the oxygen, uh, oxygen to stabilize these a higher oxidation state that exceeds that of fluorine, uh, thus the highest Mn fluoride is MnF4 and whereas the highest oxid oxides is Mn2O7, the ability of the oxygen to form the multiple bonds to metal explains its superiority in the covalent oxides Mn2O7 and each Mn is tetrahedrally surrounded by O's including a MnO, MnO bridge like and that the tetrahedron which is MnO4 and minus ions are known as OV of V that Cr6, uh, uh, Mn5, Mn6 and Mn7. Now we'll discuss about oxides of 3D metals. In terms of oxides of 3D metals here we have your oxidation number then we have your that is of 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay so for the same we'll go ahead So in the same cases here for the same that is your plus 7, plus 6, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2 and plus 1. So for the same, for plus 7, the group, this, these were groups here, just write it on these all are groups. So in the same cases for plus 7 we have here is your mn2 or 7 for plus 6 it is your for 6 is your cr 3 for plus 5 is your v205 and for we have your ti 2 and uh, sorry for it is here so yeah ti 2 and v204 cr 2 
and MnO2. For plus 3, it is your Sc2O3, Ti2O3, V2O3, Cr2O3, Mn2O3, and uh, which is your Fe. 2O3 and CO3O3 O4 okay that we have CMN O4 uh, for uh, this is of plus 3 configuration no? No, so this is O3 only okay now I will go ahead uh, for the plus 2 configuration but before starting with the configuration here so for MN it is MN2 uh, MN, MN 2O3 and MN uh, here as well that is your MN3 O4 as well this is fe 304 as well and for here as i wrote uh, write it uh, before only so that is co304 as well okay for this now uh, for class 2 oxidation state so for that uh, we have it is tio vo cro mno then feo coo nio C U O and this is Z N O. Okay, so for class one it is C U two O here that we have as follows. And for the same, now we'll go ahead with another one that is in terms of you know uh, the other question that has been arise and that will be do it here only. So for the same, uh, that is also an important one, and we have to give an exa you know uh, the detailed explanation about that as well. So we'll discuss that uh, here. That is the question fifth question of this particular unit and the second question of this sessions as well let's go ahead for the same so the question we have how would you account for the increasing oxidizing power in the series that is VO2 plus is less than Cr2O72 minus less than MnO4 minus here so this is due to the increasing stability of the lower species to which they are reduced this is the reason here I just write it down to you all and you can write it down as I told you this is due to increasing stability of the lower species to which they are reduced. The another question is that how would you account the irregular variations of ionization enthalpy first and second in the first series of transition element as well that what we have to talk about it now we'll go ahead for the other one that we have to discuss here which is your chemical reactivity and e minus values that we have to discuss here so we go ahead chemical reactivity and E values so here for the same that the transition metals are widely in their chemical reactivity many of them are sufficiently electropositive to dissolve in mineral acid although a few are noble and that is uh, they are unaffected by a single acid here where the metals of the first series with the exceptions of copper and are relatively more reactive and are oxidized by uh, that is 1 mh plus and through the actual rate at which these metals react with oxidizing agent like hydrogen ion that is sometimes slow for example titanium and vanadium in practice that are passive to dilute non-oxidizing acid at room temperatures 
where the E minus values for M and 2 plus uh, MM that indicates a decreasing tendency to form a divalent cations across the series and this general trend towards the less negative E minus values is related to the increase in the sum of the first and the second ionization enthalpies. It is interesting to note that, that the E values for MN, NI and ZN as more negative than expected from the general trend whereas the stabilizing uh, of half filled D subshell in MN2 plus and completely filled D subshells in zinc that are related to their E values for nickel E values is related to the highest negative enthalpies of hydrogen only in the same cases then uh, examinations of E values for the redox couple which is M3 plus uh, by M2 plus which is that shows Mn3 uh, plus and CO3 plus ions that are strongest oxidizing agent in aqueous solution. The ions Ti2 plus and V2 plus and Cr2 plus that are strong reducing agent and will liberate hydrogen from a dilute acid. For that, we have an example there that will do it uh, by an equation here, which is to be as follows. 2 Cr2 plus aqueous plus 2H plus aqueous it will give 2Cr2 plus sorry 2Cr3 plus aqueous plus H2 gas okay now we'll be having a sixth question of the sessions here of this particular unit that what we have to discuss here and that is all even though important as well so on the same cases we have to go ahead further and that what we have to talk about it so the question we have is the question is for the first row transition metal the e values are for the e values therefore vcr mn feco nicu and then for the m2 plus by m that we have a values for that we have to explain the irregularities in the above values here why they have irregularities in their values so let's go ahead for the same for the first row transition metals the e values are we have e that is m2 plus by 2 m e your mn p C U N I. This is Q. C U. Okay, that we have. That we have as follows. The values we have to find out. So the values being given here is for the V is minus one point eighteen. CR it is minus 0 0.91 and then minus 1.18 minus 0 0.44 minus 0 0.28 minus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.34 you have to explain the irregularities explain the irregularities in the above values solution that we have to find out for this so i just tell you about that the e values and mn2 plus values that are not regular which can be explained from the irregular variations of ionization enthalpy which is delta 1 and h1 plus delta 1 and h2 and also the sublimation enthalpies which are relatively much less for the magnesium and vanadium as well We'll go ahead with another question they we have to talk about it and that is the seventh question of the session and that is also an important one here we'll go ahead for the same the question is why is e minus values for the mn3 plus and mn2 plus that couples much more you know uh, that the positive than that for the cr3 plus and cr2 plus or fe2 3 plus by fe2 plus here you have to explain for that i will just write it down the solution for this so that you will get to know and we can just write it down for that We'll have the E minus value 
m2 plus by m values are not regular which can be explained from from the irregular variation of ionization ionization enthalpies delta 1 h1 plus delta 1 h2 and also sublimation the enthalpies which are relatively much less manganese and vanadium now we'll go ahead with as i told you about another question which is your send question here and that the question we have as follows the question is Why is E value for the MN three plus MN two plus couple more much more negative positive much more positive than that for CR3 plus CR2 plus or FE3 plus FE2 plus explain that we have solution for the same we have just I told you that much larger third ionization of MN whereas that required the change is a D5 to D4 is mainly responsible for this and this is also explained why plus three states of MN is of a little importance here so I just write it on the reason much larger third ionization and energy of MN where the required change of D5 to D4 is mainly responsible for this this also explains why the plus 3 state of MN is of little importance the question we have that is the uh, uh, that is your homework for you all that is uh, the question is why is the highest oxidation state of a metal exhibits in its oxides or chlorides only and uh, other question is why a stronger reducing agent here uh, that is 2 plus and fe2 plus and why then what you have to explain it out let's go ahead for the another uh, we'll have to discuss that is about related to uh, the magnetic property here we go ahead so in terms of magnetic property that we have to talk about it in terms of magnetic property when a magnetic field is applied to substance mainly two types of magnetic behavior are observed which is diamagnetism and paramagnetism diamagnetism substances are repelled by the applied field while the paramagnetism substances are attracted 
substance which are attracted very strongly and are said to be ferromagnetic and in fact the ferromagnetism is an extreme form of paramagnetism many of the transitions metal ions are paramagnetic paramagnetism arises from the presence of unpaired electron each such electrons having a magnetic momentum associated with its spin angular momentum and orbital angular momentum for the compounds of the first series of transition metals, the contributions of the orbital angular momentum is effectively quenched and hence is of no significance. For these, the magnetic momentum is determined by the numbers of unpaired electron and calculated by using the spin only formula. And the formula we have equals to under root n n plus 2. Here. For the same cases here where n is the number of unpaired electron and uh, this uh, is magnetic momentum in units of Bohr's magnetism and a single unpaired electron has a magnetic momentum of 1.73 Bohr magneton which is Bm. The magnetic momentum increase, moment increases with increasing number of unpaired electron thus the observed magnetic momentum gives a useful indication about the number of unpaired electron that is present in the atom molecules or ions. The magnetic momentum calculated from the spin only formula and those derived experimentally for some ions of the first true transition element. The experimental data are mainly for the hydrated ion in a solutions or in a solid state. We'll discuss about the calculated and observed magnetic momentum here, which is calculated and observed magnetic moments that we have so here we have that is for the ions then we have configuration then we have your unpaired electrons here it is magnetic moment so this has been calculated and observed This is what we have to talk about. SC3 plus, SSTI3 plus, TI2 plus, V2 plus, CR2 plus, MN2 plus, Fe2 plus, CO2 plus. Ni2 plus, Cu2 plus, Zn2 plus here. Okay. For the same, we will just made a table here first. Okay. So for the same, for Sc3 plus is your, this is 3D0. 0, 0, and 0. Ti3 plus is 3D1, 1, 2, 3, 1.75. Ti2 plus 3D2, this is 2, 2.84, 2.75. V2 O plus 3D3 3 3.87 3.86 2 plus is 3D 4 4 
4 4.80 4m2 plus 3d 5 5 5.92 and this is 5.96 for the p2 plus we have 3d 6 4 4.90 this is from 5.3 to 5.5 for co2 plus as your 3d7 this is 3 this is 3.87 from 4.4 to 5.2 ni2 plus is 3d 8 2 2.84 this is 2.9 to 3.4 Cu2 plus this is 3D9 1 1.73 1.82 1.2.2 Cn2 plus that is 3D10 0 0 this is uh, D or a by uh, that is vital is full here that is D or vital is full that is unpaired electron is 0 here okay for the same we'll go ahead with another question that we have to talk about it and that is also an important one here so we'll do that and uh, that is the another question here let's uh, go ahead for the same So here we go ahead with the question that we have to talk about it and that is the question we have calculate the magnetic momentum of a divalent ion in an aqueous uh, and if its atomic number is 25 that what we have to talk about it and so we'll go ahead for the same so we'll go ahead here and that as follows calculate the magnetic moment of a divalent ion in aqueous solution if its atomic number is 25 this we have to find out so with atomic number 25 the divalent ion in aqueous uh, solution that will have a d uh, the power 5 configuration where that is your uh, five unpaired electrons the magnetic momentum we have which is equals to under root 5 5 plus 2 5 plus 2 is 7 7 5 is 35 so we'll just take it to root as your 5.92 bm okay so that we have your that will be the right answer for the same now we will be going ahead for the another one that what we have to talk about it which is the another important one the question that i will give you as homework here for the same that as we have is your you have to calculate the spin only magnetic momentum of m and m2 plus aqueous ion which is z is equals to 27 here 
now we'll discuss about the another uh, property we have the formations of colored ions here so we'll have to discuss about formation of colored ions in terms of formations of colored ions when an electron uh, that uh, from a lower energy of uh, d orbital is excited to a higher energy of d orbital then the energy of the excitation uh, that corresponds to the frequencies of light absorbed and the frequency generally lies in the visibility region visible region and that the color absorbed to respond to the complementary color of light that absorbed here and that the frequency of the light absorbed is determined by the nature of the uh, that ligands in aqueous solution where water molecules are ligands are the ligands and that the color of the ions absorbed are uh, discussed where a few colored solutions of d block elements are illustrated so we are the colors of the sum of the first uh, row transition metal ions in aqueous solutions from left to uh, uh, you know right that we have and for the same we'll form a table here which is to be as follows like for the configuration example and then of course we'll uh, do it uh, with, uh, with the same for other colors as well that what we, uh, it represent here here configuration Confi. So here we go ahead. Configuration example and color. Okay, so that what we'll make it here a table. So here for that we have your three D that is 0 then 3d 0 3d 1 then 3d 1 again 3d 2 we have 3d 3 then 3d 3 3d 4 3d 4 then 3d 5 3d 5 and then 3d6 then we have 3d6 3d7 3d8 3d9 and 3d10 okay for the same we have to talk about it okay so here for the same we go ahead and that is for the 3d0 it is sc3 plus so, and that is color is your colorless for 3d0 it is your ti4 plus it is colorless 3d1 is your ti3 plus which is purple in color then 3d1 again we have v that is your v4 plus that is your blue We'll go ahead for the 3D2 here. That is 3D2 is V. That is V3 plus. This is your green in color. 3D3 is your uh, that uh, we have to talk about it. And on the same cases, this is V2 plus. And the color is violet. 3D uh, that is your the another 3D3 we have, which is for CR3 plus. that is we have violet in color then of course mn3 plus violet in color then we have 3d4 which is cr2 plus and that is we have your uh, blue in color then mn2 plus pink in color then fe3 plus this is your uh, a pink this is your yellow in color then fe2 plus and this is your green in color then your, we have your co3 plus 
co2 plus that is your blue pink and i2 plus green cu2 plus this is blue zn2 plus is your colorless this is how the colors in some of the first row you know that the aqueous transition metals ions has been given here that uh, we have talked about it and that you have to even know about it now we'll go ahead with another uh, we have property that is the formation of complex compound so we'll go ahead formation of complex compounds in terms of formations of complex compound that the complex compounds are those in which the metals ions bind a number of anions and neutral molecules that giving the complex species with a characteristics properties where a few examples that are FeCN6 uh, uh, 3 and FeCN6 uh, uh, 4 and CuNH3 4 2 plus and P uh, that is PI we have the PTCL 4 2 minus the chemistry of the uh, complex compound is uh, dealt with in detail that we'll discuss in the next unit and that the transition metal we have the transition metal form a large number of complex compound this is due to the comparatively smaller size of the metal ion and their high ionic charges and the availability of the duo vital for the bond formation as well we'll discuss about another one which is your catalytic property In terms of catalytic property here that the transition metals and the compounds are known for their catalytic activity this activity is uh, ascribed to their ability to adopt multiple oxidation state and to form complexes where vanadium which is V oxide in a contact process finely divided of iron that is uh, iron in a Hebus process and nickels in a catalytic hydrogenation are some of the examples where catalysis at the solid surface involve the formations of bonds between the reaction molecule and the atom of the surface of the catalyst first row transition metal that utilizes the 3 and a 4s electron for bonding this has the effect of increasing the concentrations of reactant at the catalyst surfaces and also weakening of the bond in the reacting molecules the activation energy is lowering and also become the transition metals ion that can change the oxidation state they become more effective as catalyst for example iron third catalyst is the reaction between iodide and per sulfate ions here for the same we go ahead 2i minus plus s2o 8 2 minus give i2 plus 2 so4 2 minus an explanation of this catalytic action that can be given here is 2 fe 3 plus plus 2 i minus will give 2 fe 2 plus plus i2 the equation 2 fe 2 plus plus s2 o8 2 minus will give 2 fe 3 plus uh, 3 plus plus 2 so 4 2 minus here now we'll discuss about uh, here that is the formations of interstitials compound here formation of interstitial compounds Formations of interstitial compound here, where the interstitial compound are those which are formed when small atoms like hydrogen, carbon, or nitrogen are trapped inside the crystal lattice of metals. They are usually non stoichiometric and are neither typically ionic or nor covalent. For example, TIC MN4, uh, MNI1 here, uh, MN4 uh, that is N and NHFFE3H. VHO uh, that is VH 0 0.56 and TIH 1.7 here 
for the etc so the formation uh, that the formula is quoted uh, do not uh, uh, you know that of course not corresponding to any normal oxidation state of the metal because of the nature of their composition these compounds are referred to as an interstitial compound and the principal physical and chemical characteristics of these compounds that are to be as follows the first we have the chemical characteristic the physical and uh, you know chemical characteristics first we have they have high melting point higher than those of pure metals second is uh, that is they are very hard some uh, borides approach diamond in hardness and uh, the another is your they are retained metallic conductivity and the fourth is they are chemically inert i will discuss about the another one which is alloy formation in terms of alloy formation here where an alloy is a blend of metals that prepared by mixing the components alloy may be homogeneous solid solutions in which the atoms of one metals are distributed randomly and among the atoms of the other uh, such alloys that are formed by atoms with metallic radii that is within about 15 percent of each other because of the similar radii and the other characteristics of transition metal alloy are readily formed by those these metals that the alloys so formed are hard and have often high melting point we are the best known uh, are ferrous alloys and the chromium chromium vanadium and tungsten molybdenum and manganese that are used for the productions of a variety of steel and are stainless steel alloy of the transition metals with a non-transition metal such as your brass which is copper zinc and bronze which is copper tin and are also considerable industrial importance as well so we'll go ahead the another question we'll talk about it which is the question we have what is meant by disproportionation of an oxidation state give an example here so we'll go ahead for the same what is meant by disproportionation of an oxidation state give an example so the solution for this we have when a particular oxidation state that becomes less stable is that relative to the other oxidation state one a lower and one higher it is said to be undergo disproportionation manganese uh, that is your uh, fourth in acidic solutions here uh, that like manganese becomes unstable uh, relative to magnetic uh, magnet manganese seven and manganese uh, four in acidic solutions here so for the same we have a reaction for this which is 3 mn6 o4 2 minus plus 4h plus will give 2 mn7 o minus 4 plus mn4 o2 plus 2h2 here so for that we have to talk about it now another question we have here is to explain why cu plus ions is not stable in aqueous solution now we'll go ahead some important compound of transition element some important compounds of transition elements that we have so for here they we have your oxides and oxo anions of metals as we'll discuss that so we have as follows oxides and oxo anions of metals We 
here these oxides are generally formed by the reactions of metals with oxygen at high temperatures all the metals except scandium or that form mno oxides mo oxides which are ionic and the highest oxidation number is uh, the oxide which coincides with the group number and is attained by SC2O3 uh, to MN2O uh, that is 7 here and that beyond group 7 no higher oxides of iron above Fe2O3 that are known and beside the oxides the uh, that is oxidation stabilizes a V5 as VO2 and V4 as VO2 plus and Ti that is TiO2 plus here. As the oxidation number of a metal increases, the ionic character decreases. In the case of Mn, MnO is covalent, uh, which is uh, we have your green oil. Even ClO3 and V2O7 have low melting points. In these higher oxides, the acidic character is a predominant here. On the same cases, thus Mn2O7 gives HMn4 and ClO3. O3 that gives H2CrO4 and H2CrO7 as well. V2O5 is, however, the MO or amphoteric through mainly acidic and it gives uh, VO4 3 minus as well as VO2 plus salts. In vanadium, there is a gradual change from the basics uh, that is basic of V2O5 to less uh, basic V2O4 and to M4 uh, uh, V2O5, V2O4 that dissolves in acid to give VO2 plus salts. Similarly, V2O5 reacts with alkalis as well as the acids to give VO4 3 minus and VO4 2 minus here. VO4 plus uh, respectively and the well characterized CRO is the basic but CR2O3 is amphoteric here. Now we'll go ahead for the another one that we have to discuss here which is the another question in terms of potassium dichromate uh, which is a CR, C2, CR2O7 that is uh, for the potassium dichromate that is a C2Cr2O7 Potassium dichromate is a very uh, important chemical used uh, in leather industry and as an oxidant uh, for the preparations of many uh, azo component compounds. Dichromates are generally prepared from the chromate and which uh, in turn are obtained by the fusions of chrome ores of FeCr2O4 with sodium or potassium carbonate in free access of air. The reaction with sodium carbonate that occurred as follows here. Over Fe Cr two O four plus eight Na two CO three plus seven O two eight Na two Cr O four plus two Fe O three Fe two O three plus eight CO two here. The yellow solutions of the uh, sodium chromate is filtered and acidified with a sulfuric acid to give a solution and from which the orange sodium dichromate Na2Cr2O7 and R2H2O that can be crystallized here and that will form in the form of reaction which is 2Na2Cr2O4 plus 2H plus will give Na2Cr2O7 plus 2Na plus plus H2O that we have so in the same cases here that sodium dichromate is more soluble than potassium dichromate where the latter is therefore prepared by you know treating the solutions of sodium dichromate with the potassium chloride on the same cases uh, here we will go ahead for the same which is the reaction we have Na2OCr2O7 plus 2KCl will give C2Cr2O7 plus 2NaCl here Orange crystals of potassium dichromate crystallizes out and the chromates and dichromates are interconvertible in aqueous solution. Uh, depending upon pH of the solution, the oxidation state of the chromium in chromate and dichromate in the same uh, is the same. So that for that we have your equations as 2 CrO4 2 minus plus 2H plus will give Cr2O7 2 minus plus h2o here that we have here as follows as you can see now for the same we'll the rest will uh, talk about it which is uh, about cr2o7 2 minus plus 2 oh minus will give 2 cro4 
2 minus plus H2O. In the same cases, we'll talk about uh, which is the chromate ions and dichromate ions here. So, the, for the chromate ions, it is being representing Cr, O, 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 and O. Here, this is being 2 minus, this is your chromate ions. Now for the another one which is your dichromate ions, so it has been presenting Cr, O, Cr, it will be O, 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 it is bonded with O, O, O minus, uh, this is, uh, this is the length we have is your 179 pm, this angle we have is 126 and this is degree and this is 163 pm dichromate ion so here for the same that the structures of chromate ions CrO4 2 minus and the dichromate ion which is Cr2 7 2 minus are shown below that as I represented and that the chromate ions is a tetrahedral Whereas the trichromate consists of two tetrahedron, uh, the test uh, two tetrahedron uh, that sharing here, and uh, which is uh, sharing one corner with the CrO uh, Cr bond angle with one point six degree. Sodium and potassium dichromates are strong oxidizing agent. The sodium salts has a greater solubility in the water and is extensively used in oxidizing uh, agent in organic chemistry. Where potassium dichromate is used as a primary standard in a volumetric analysis in acidic solution. The ox its oxidizing oxidizing uh, actions that can be represented to be as follows. In the equation we have Cr two O seven two minus plus 14 H plus plus 6 electron will give 2 Cr 3 plus plus 7 H2O here and for the same we have E minus equals to 1.33 volt thus acidified potassium dichromate will oxidize iodides iodides to iodine and sulfides to sulfur and 10 second to 10 four and iron second salts to iron third so the half reactions that are noted here for that we will represent c 6 i minus that tends to 6 i2 plus 6 electron 3 sn2 plus 3 sn4 plus plus 6 electron this is 3 h2s will give 6H plus plus 3S plus 6 electron. 6Fe2 plus will give 6Fe3 plus plus 6 electron here. The full ionic equation that may be obtained by adding the half reaction for the potassium dichromate to the half reaction for the reducing agent. For example, Cr2O7 2 minus plus 14H plus 6Fe2 plus. 2 Cr 3 plus plus 6 Fe 3 plus plus 7 H2O here. So potassium permanganate which is your KMN 4 for that we have to talk about it and for the same we have here as follows for potassium. Potassium manganate KMNO4. So for that, potassium permanganate is prepared by the fusions of MnO or that two with an alkali metal hydro uh, hydroxides and oxidizing agent like KMnO3. Uh, this provides a dark green K2 MnO4, which disproportionates uh, in the neutral or acidic solutions to give the permanganate here, and that will form here in the form which is two. MnO2 plus 4KOH plus O2 will give 2K2MnO4 plus 2H2 and 3MnO4 2 minus plus 4H plus will give 2MnO4 plus MnO2 plus 2H2 here. This is your improper uh, that we have improper. So commercially is prepared by alkaline uh, that oxidize, oxidative fusions of MnO uh, that is uh, 2 followed by the hydrolytic oxidations of magnetic 6, magnate 6 here. 
so the reaction for the same we have MnO2 that is fused with KOH oxidized with air or KnO3 it will give MnO43 that is your manganate ion another one we have MnO4 2 minus it will give here that is electrolytic oxidation in alkaline solution this is your MnO4 just for magnet ion this is your magnet yep okay so on the same cases we go ahead further which we'll have to talk about it and that is another one here so in the same references in the laboratory a magnet second ion salt is oxidized per oxo uh, disulfides to per uh, manganate here so on the same cases uh, we go ahead for the solution for this we have equation here which is two mn2 plus plus 5 s2 o8 2 minus plus 8 h2o will give 2 mn o4 minus plus 10 so4 2 minus plus 16 h plus so in the same cases here with a reference towards we will discuss moreover in the next coming class so here we'll be ending it up and before ending it up it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers to please go through with the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even though you can also enjoy the video as well other than that if i'm going ahead here in the detail so yes uh, we have to we had cover up your sociology and software engineering classes as well and other than that we are dealing with the quantitative aptitude where we have done your arithmetical ability and this has been divided into two sections that is arithmetical ability and data interpretation in arithmetical ability we had done operations on numbers lcm and scf of numbers decimal fractions simplification square roots and cube roots and averages and uh, problems on numbers and now we are dealing with the problems on uh, ages as well you can go ahead that is also a typical you know uh, topic that we have to discuss here other than that, we are dealing with the reasoning where we had completed your verbal reasoning, which is general mental ability and the logic reasoning. And in non-verbal reasoning, we are dealing with the quantity uh, that is a series analogy, classification, analytical reasoning, mirror image, water image, embedded figure, completions of incomplete patterns, figure matrix, paper folding, paper cutting. We are dealing with. We had end up with here. Next coming class, we'll start discussing about wound detection. That is the another topic. In terms of coming to the chemistry for the class 12, this is important for academic as well as for the competition as well. Here we had completed unit 1, the solid state, which is we had completed general characteristics of solid state, amorphous and crystalline solid, classification and crystalline solid, crystal lattice and unit cell, numbers of atoms in a unit cell, close pack structures, packing efficiency, calculation in volume unit cell dimensions, imperfections in solid, electrical properties, magnetic properties as well. In unit 2, the solution, that is the types of solution, expressing the concentration of solution, solubility, vapor pressures of liquid solution, ideal and non-ideal solution, corrugative property of determinations of molar masses, abnormal molar masses as well. Unit 3rd is your electrochemistry, which is electrochemical cells, galvanic cells, Nernst equation, conductance of electrolytic solution, electrolytic cells and electrolysis, batteries, fuels and corrosion. Unit 4 is your chemical kinetics, which we had completed your rate of chemical reaction, factor influencing the rate of reaction, integrated rate equations, pseudo first order reaction, temperature dependence on the rate of the reaction, collision theory of the chemical reaction. Unit 5th is your surface chemistry, where we had completed adsorption, catalyst, collides, classification of collide, emulsions, collides around us. Unit 6 is general principles and processes of isolations of uh, element where we had completed occurrence of metal, concentrations of ores, extractions of crude metal from concentrated ore, thermodynamic principles of metallurgy, electrochemical principles of metallurgy, oxidation, uh, reduction, refining, uses of aluminium, copper, zinc and iron. Unit 7 is the p block element where we had completed uh, group 15 element, dinitrogen, ammonium, oxides of nitrogen, nitric acid, phosphorus, allotropic form, 
phosphine, phosphorus halides, oxo acids of phosphorus, group 16 element, dioxygen, simple oxide, ozone, sulfur, allotropic form, sulfur dioxide, oxo acids of sulfur, sulfuric acids, group 17 element, chlorine, hydrogen chloride, oxo acids of halogens, interhalogens compound, and group 18 element as well. Notate which we had started that is the DNF block here where we had completed the positions in the periodic table electronic configurations of DA block element general properties of transition element which is D blocks and important compounds of transition element the lanthanides uh, some important uh, that we had started with some important uh, properties of you know uh, that is uh, we have to deal with the, some important compounds of the transition element we have started surely we'll complete in the next summer class then we'll start discussing about the lanthanides actinides some implications of dn uh, f block element after that we'll complete that soon after that other than that we talk about it yes we are dealing with uh, the new net time which is a coordination compound here we have to cover up the oneness theory of the coordination compound definitions of some important terms pertaining to the coordination compound nomenclature of coordination compound isomerism of the coordination compound bonding in the coordination compound bonding in the metal carbon analysis stability of the coordination compound importance of the applications and coordination compound here so here we'll be ending it up it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers to please go through with the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even you can also enjoy the video as well thank you hope you enjoy this video if you like this video please give a thumbs up and give your suggestion on a comment box thank you